Today, the delta of the river Danube, the second largest river in Europe, remains one of the continent's richest biodiversity hotspots. One of Europe's most extensive biosphere reserves is found here, shared by Ukraine and Romania. But the Danube Delta is more than simply pristine nature located within the boundaries of protected areas. During the 20th century, much of the Delta was changed for the sake of agriculture. Natural processes were disturbed, lakes and marshes were cut off from the Danube itself. Populations of many wildlife species were degraded and displaced. This means the protection of selected areas of the Delta is no longer enough. Restoration of the ecosystem is essential if wild nature is to thrive and function as it should. It is here that the new approach to nature conservation can help the rewilding. What is rewilding? Rewilding is, by and large, giving nature back its controlled levers. When we come to the forest, we think that it's controlled by foresters. But when we come to the shore of the lake, we think that the water management company is managing the lake. And if there are fish in the lake, we think that the fishery enterprise introduced them. We're trying, with the help of rewilding, to return to a state where the nature regulates and supports itself. Restoring natural wetlands requires restoring the natural flow of water. Over many decades, economic activity meant strongly interfered with water system of the delta. Large territories were cut off from the Danube channel by dams. Road embankments blocked the natural channels, and tens of hundreds of kilometers of new canals were laid for irrigation. Due to changes in natural water balance and climate, many waterways are now silted up or have dried up completely. We are now at a very interesting territory. Behind me is the Sasik Lagoon, which used to be an estuary. It is fed by three rivers, the Kagilnik River, the Sarata River and the Kagach River. The problem is that back in Soviet times these rivers were blocked up. While the riverbeds were preserved, there was very little water in most of them. And in autumn of 2019, a part of rewilding efforts, ten of these embankments were demolished. Now we see the first results, we see how the water came and how the animals reacted. Following the removal of the dams, the nature in the lower reaches of Kagilnik, Sarata and Kagach rivers has changed for better. The clearing of canals and construction of culverts have also had a beneficial impact on the state of Lake Kartal in the upper part of the Danube Delta. Further work will make it possible to restore good connection between Kartal and the other Danube lakes. In the lower part of the Danube, a channel was cleared connecting the Danube with the real pearl of the reserve, the Lake Anankin Kut, which led to restoration of natural water exchange and floodplains. Work and opening of dikes built to drain the landscape will be carried out on Yermakov Island in the Ukrainian parts of the Danube Delta, as well as Chernovka Island in the Romanian part of the Delta. Preparations are also being made to improve water exchange in the lakes of Yane, Lung, Katlabuch, as well as the Lake Bileo in Moldova. Nature forests are not that widespread in the delta, but they also face challenges. With the dominance of one type of vegetation, there is no variety of habitats for insects, birds and mammals. Such natural systems can provide shelter only to a very limited number of living species like a painting painted in tones of the same color. Biodiversity is a science that nature is prospering and biodiverse natural systems are more resilient in the face of unfavorable conditions. The Zhebryansky Ridge was once a coastline. The Romanian Letia Ridge is a continuation of the Zhebryansky Ridge. Right after the war, when the Vilkova Primorsky Highway was built, these dunes were planted with Crimean pine. At that time it was the right decision. The sands were fixed. But now, when a certain time has passed, we see the negative aspects of these monotonous thickets of Crimean pine. First of all, there's a great risk of fire. The first time last year, aircraft were called in from Odessa because the fire engines could not cope with the fire. The project plans to gradually replace pine with native species. There was an expedition to Romanian part of the delta to learn how to plant similar oaks to those found in Lete Ridge. 
Areas of steppes are valuable natural habitats that support unique plant and animal species. Unfortunately, only 4% of European steppe are now remain. The remainder have been ploughed and used for agriculture. We want to preserve and restore the remaining areas of steppe in the Danube region. The picturesque Tarutino steppe suffered significant damage from illegal ploughing several years ago. As part of our rewilding effort, we plan to collect seeds, wild steppe grasses and sow ploughed areas. In the nature, everything is interconnected. Plants do not exist separately from animals. And if flora have been preserved in small wild oases in some places, then frequently there is no place for wild fauna in today's human-dominated landscape. Of course, during the restoration of natural areas, many species of fish, amphibians, birds and small mammals return to rewilded ecosystems of their own accord. But the big mammals that once lived in Southeast Europe have practically disappeared from nature over the last two to three hundred years. Including such important links in food chains as large ungulates as well as predators. One of the most important tasks for restoration of natural processes is to therefore reintroduce wild large herbivores to provide natural grazing. Although some species such as Auro are now extinct, we can use primitive breeds of cats and horses that can perform the same ecological role, as well as live independently in the nature without human support. Behind us is a herd of Carpathian water buffalo. We can think of large herbivores as landscape architects who helped to create a beautiful natural mosaic. Without them, the Danube Delta would have been overgrown with reeds and bushes and the ecological value of the land would drop. Large herbivores open up the landscape. They create meadows where there's grass. They create small pools where they like to swim, which support fish, amphibians and many water birds. To date, the animals are doing really well. They are already completely quarantined and all the tests show that the animals are strong, hardy and healthy. Today they are ready to move to the areas where they will live free-roaming lives. As a result of ongoing rewilding efforts, water buffalo, wild conic horses, fallow and red deer have been released in the Ukrainian part of the Danube Delta on Yermakov Island. Hutsu horses and grey Ukrainian cattle have been transported to the small Tataru Island upstream of the Danube. As part of the previous rewilding efforts, the small herd of water buffalo were also settled in the village of Orlovka. And on the Romanian coast, close to the community of Svento Georgi, the descendants of the Aro, the Tauros cattle, have also been settled. Steppe territories need herbivores that are used to open spaces. For this purpose, a herd of Kulan, wild donkeys, and several European fallow deer were brought to the Rutina steppe from Ascania Nova Reserve and there are plans to increase the number of herbivores on the steppe in future. The eagle owl is one of the most impressive owls in the world. The bird was previously a common species, but today in Ukraine it lives mainly in the north and east of the country. Its numbers declined sharply due to habitat destruction and the Soviet campaign to exterminate birds of prey. The last time the eagle owl was seen in the delta was about 10 years ago. For two years in a row we have been releasing eagle owls in the Ukrainian part of the delta to fill a gap in the food chain and control the rats that destroy many bird nests on the coast. A regional reintroduction program for owl will see 16 more birds released over the coming years. These were hatched in Odessa Zoo. The animals that have been released in the delta are all doing well and many are producing offspring. This is encouraging news for rewilding team and inspires us to continue our efforts. Release plans for the near future involve red deer, tauros and marmots. Another important pillar of rewilding in the areas where the wild nature is in the process of being restored is the development of the new nature-based economies. What we want to show that wildlife can be profitable 
Agriculture in the Danube region is often unprofitable, especially in the face of climate change, and overfishing has seen populations of most of the valuable fish species severely degraded. In this regard, the restoration of natural areas and the return of wild animals can provide alternatives to traditional professions of local communities. The development of nature-based tourism in the region will create many new jobs. Rewilding plants and veggies the creation of several eco-parks, which should significantly increase the tourism appeal of these places. Острів Єрмаків розташований в українській частині Дельти Дунаю, поблизу від містечка. Єрмаков Island is located in the lower part of the Ukrainian Danube Delta, near the town of Bilkovo. It was restored to nature estate in 2009 under the framework of WWF project. Today, this island has become one of the most biodiverse areas of the Danube Biosphere Reserve, where visitors can see many of the different aquatic birds. They can also see giants, water buffaloes and wild conning horses grazing on the island since 2019 as part of our rewilding efforts. The Tarutinov Eco Park will be created on the restored and preserved territories of the unique Tarutina steppe in the Ukrainian parts of the Danube Delta. The Vesola Delina village community and the local ethnographic and green tourism companies support the creation of the park. Visitors will be able to see the last natural landscape of the steppes in the regions and the variety of flora and fauna which will soon include kulan, fallow deer and marmots, in addition to wildlife species that continue to exist here. In addition, we want to expand the market of local organic products, honeys, herbs, cheese and wine. We are committed to supporting local producers in promoting their products, while generating income for local communities. Then people begin to understand that wild, healthy nature has far better economic prospect than intensive agriculture which destroys natural capital. We are in a dialogue with local communities. After all, they should be interested in the revival of wildlife in order to obtain new sustainable sources of income and learn how to effectively use the resources available to them. And also, they should be really proud of their native land. We organize traveling photographic exhibitions that portray the natural beauty of the Danube Delta. Ethno-eco festivals will be held on both banks of the Danube, which arouse great interest among tourists and stimulate traditional crafts. And special attention is also being paid to school campaigns, the education of the younger generation, which in a few years will become a real master in the region. The geographical extent of rewarding efforts in the Danube Delta is quite wide, and continues to expand every year. Wildlife is recognized as a fundamental part of European heritage, an essential element of modern, prosperous and healthy society. Rewilding Europe aims to restore large wilderness landscapes in at least 10 regions in Europe. They will demonstrate how rewilding vision can be implemented on a much larger scale. We want to make Europe a continent with more space for wild nature, wildlife and natural processes. As we return the diversity of life, we will continue to explore the new ways for the people to enjoy and make livings through the wildlife. The United Nations declared 2021 and 2030 as a decade of ecosystem restoration. Continued economic development and human health and well-being will not be possible without recovery of wild nature and degraded landscapes. The ecological crisis, climate change and pandemics are all the results of an economy driven by unsustainable consumption of resources. It is expected that in the next 10 years countries, international organizations and economic institutions will jointly focus on restoring the nature and recovery of destroyed and degraded natural areas. Rewarding is now being discussed all over the world as one of the most promising ways to repair our natural environment. <laughs>